Okay, in this video I'm going to teach you how to set up a new patient and to uh, conduct the stim only procedure. So I started up Neurofield and as you can see I have two X3000 and two TDCS ACS units connected to the computer. I'm going to select Canvas number one and to enter in a new patient simply click into the little field here that says last name and enter in the name of your patient and we're going to call this test four first name test four and then date of birth and i'm going to say one one nineteen oops one one nineteen eighty uh, you can use the u.s format for uh, date of birth or the uh, european date of birth with um, day then month and year they both work once you enter in that information click on add new patient and a little pop-up says patient added successfully you click OK and now you'll notice that the patient is now on the grid here and this little blinky thing uh, the blinky text in red says that verify desired patient is selected and click select patient to continue when you add a new patient it's automatically selected for you however to select another patient just go to the left side of their name here on the grid and just click on the grid and you'll see um, uh, that uh, the patient will be selected here. Once you select who you want, click select patient and continue. Now uh, in, on this page, uh, this is where you set up your STEM units. Uh, you'll notice that the tabs at the top of the interface here are in logical progression. And what we want to do is um, we want to select the units we want to use to give us them. So you'll notice it says enable primary, enable secondary, and this is for the EMF units such as your X3000, X2000, or X1000. On the bottom here it says primary TDCS, ACS, RNS units, and you, have, you can enable primary and secondary. So you can run a total of four STEM units at one time. Um, so I'm going to enable everything at this point. Once you do that, they're all active, and you could just continue on at this point and select a protocol. However, it is strongly recommended that you select uh, the locations in which you actually put your electrodes and coils, um, because all this information will be saved into the history, and uh, the next time uh, the person comes in, you can pull up the history very quickly and be able to run the session. So, um, in this case, um, I'm going to select my coil locations by clicking on the drop down menus and I'm just clicking arbitrary sites here and once I get them all set up then I got O2 and now you're all set up with the coils um, for the bottom here you can uh, again set up your anode and cathode or if you're doing DC or for ACS it doesn't matter um, you can set up your your um, site locations. I'm going to say 01 for this, and then here we'll go FP2 and O2. Now you can. There's uh, some other controls here that you should be aware of. Um, there's an override uh, for each one of the units, and this is where you can increase or decrease the uh, intensity. Um, so if you click override, you can enter a voltage here between one and five volts. Um, for the EMF units and the same is said about the uh, ACS units DC uh, or noise you can override those um, you could also change the waveform uh, and make it something different other than what the protocol indicates so if you click on waveform you'll notice that this little waveform selection window opens up and you just pick the one that you want and then it will be loaded so I'm going to click on sign because that's what I usually use um, but I don't want to override my protocol now so I'm just kind of going to get rid of all of that so the last thing to know is there's a global duration override at the bottom of the page uh, most protocols that I write are around 5,000 milliseconds however if you want them shorter or longer simply click the box here and enter the number that you want for the override and Neurofield will do so so I'm going to unclick that one. Uh, the next thing you do here is click on Select Treatment Protocol. And it's going to open up this window. 
and you'll notice there's a lot here to select um, but all you need to do is select a protocol from the drop down list and this is your drop down list right here and if you uh, scroll down uh, you can see uh, the number of protocols that are now um, in the system and you'll notice that um, some of these are combination protocols for instance 1 to 4 and TDCS or 4 to 8 and TDCS and, or noise with alternating current uh, with the coils um, you can pick a protocol and then click on load and you'll notice that it loads up if you look at the stem descriptions you'll see what each of the um, uh, units are going to be doing in the primary mag stem it's an EMF unit so it's going to give 1 to 4 Hertz with a 0.1 step at 5,000 milliseconds at 5 volts uh, the same for the secondary mag stem unit and for the current stem and secondary current stem you'll notice it's it's an ACS protocol 1 to 4 point 0.1 uh, step 5,000 milliseconds at 0.5 milliamps so they're going to do the same thing in terms of frequency um, but the voltages are obviously different so once you have uh, if you want to see the protocol you can actually click through these tabs here at the bottom of the screen and it'll show you what each one of the units is going to be doing so once you get this all set up and going then you click on save protocol and continue now uh, everything is loaded in. The last step here is to set the amount of loops uh, so that you can give your protocol for a specific duration. And here you have looping and auto abort. It defaults at one loop and the estimated runtime is 1 minute and 20 seconds. Uh, but if you want to give a 20 minute uh, session then you want to um, increase the amount of loops. So let's say I make it 15 and then I click on update runtime. You'll notice it says 20 minutes now, estimated runtime. You should note that the estimated runtime is always less than the actual runtime. The actual runtime will be significantly longer than the estimated runtime. There's a lot of reasons for that, but just know that if you set an estimated runtime of 20 minutes, it may go 25 or 30 minutes for the actual runtime. So always set your loops shy of the estimate of the actual time that you want. So I want to say 13 minutes, 20 seconds. It'll probably get up there to do about 20 minutes. Um, we're attempting to work on this specific issue, um, uh, but for now, just know that uh, the estimated runtime is less than the actual runtime. The auto abort you can enable and you can set the amount of time that you want for auto abort. So if you say, look, I really don't want this to go past 20 minutes, you could set it at 20 minutes and it will stop it uh, as soon as the timer hits 20 minutes. So that's kind of one way to ensure that you, the session doesn't go too long. Um, once you have all this set up, then you can click on Save Stim Setup and Continue. And now it takes you to the next tab, which is the Neurofeedback Selection tab. Um, this is where you would set up HRV or EEG procedures and in this case we're going to be doing stim only so we're going to leave it at none and we're just going to click right through this page and you notice the red text here says verify feedback settings click save patient settings and continue so I'm going to save settings and continue and now it takes us to the start treatment page now here is where we're going to start our treatment you have the cap uh, you have the electrodes on the person, you have the coils on the person, and then you simply click on Start Treatment. Neurofield will set itself up, and then it will begin the treatment. And there you can see on the ACS that it's giving a stimulation. And every time everything lights up here, you can see um, the two ACS units running, and then you can see the two EMF units running. And below each one of the little speedometers here, you see the actual frequency that's being given. You can click on this box that says show list view and it'll show you what um, frequency is being given per unit and uh, at what uh, duration and at what um, intensity. Uh, you can go through the, the threshold status and it, a lot of data is collected as the um, uh, program is running and it gives you some good information. Now when it's all done, uh, the treatment will simply stop and you'll see a, uh, a prompt saying that treatment is complete. If you need to stop the treatment before, uh, uh, for any reason, uh,
click on stop treatment. Um, for stem only, stop treatment will stop the treatment at the end of the stem cycle. Uh, so we're going to just click on that and you can see that at the end of the stem cycle, the neural field stops and it displays treatment complete and click to continue. So we click on it and now we're all done. So we're all set and we're good to go. So the patient goes home. Um, you have them come back uh, the next time and when they come in uh, you want to be able to set them up and get going so uh, we have everything up and going here we click on use canvas number one I'm going to select my patient and then I'm going to select patient continue now I don't need to do everything I did before I just simply click on get patient stim setup and the, everything is now entered in for you the way you left it then you click save sim, uh, set up and continue and save set up and continue and then simply start the treatment if you want to see what it was you did the last time click on history on the left side of the screen here and you will see the, the treatment that you gave um, and the settings that you use the amount of loops and whatnot click on patient specific stim unit settings and here you'll see what was enabled what stim units were enabled um, and uh, it'll give you some good information um, there's a lot here in this history get, that gets stored um, and when you're doing EEG uh, or HRV that information is also stored here alright so that's how you do a stim only